Hey everyone, welcome back to Wrath of Math. In today's video, we'll be going over how to make a factor tree. Making factor trees is a useful way to find the prime factors of a number by hand. Remember that every integer greater than one has a unique prime factorization, and we can use factor trees to find those unique prime factorizations. A factor tree starts off with the number we're trying to factor at the top. Let's start off with 24. We're going to keep breaking this number down into its factors until all we have left are prime factors. We start off with two branches at the top coming down from 24. We want to find two numbers that when we multiply them together, we get 24. Then we'll put one of those numbers at the end of one branch and the other number at the end of the other branch. If a factor is prime, we'll write it in red. Otherwise, we'll write it in gray. At each stage of the factor tree, we basically go through a three-step thought process. First, we ask, what's the number we're trying to factor? That would be 24. We'll write that right over here. Then, we need to find a factor of 24. The first one that comes to my mind is 2. Since 24 is even, we know that 2 is a factor of 24. So I'll write 2 here on this second line. Then the last step is asking ourselves what times 2 equals 24. We know that 2 is a factor of 24, so something times 2 equals 24. But what is it? Well, if we divide 24 by 2, that gives us 12, which means that 12 times 2 is equal to 24. So the answer to the third question is 12. So now we've got the information we need. We're factoring 24, 2 is a factor of 24, and 2 times 12 is equal to 24. So then at the end of this branch, we'll write 2 in red, because 2 is prime, and then at the end of this branch, we'll write 12 in gray, because 12 is not prime. Since 2 is prime, we can't factor it anymore, but we do need to keep factoring 12, so we'll draw two more branches and we go through the same process. We're trying to factor 12. I know that 12 is even, which means that 2 is a factor of 12. So then, what do I have to multiply 2 by to get 12? Well, that's just 6. 2 times 6 is equal to 12. So now, at the end of this branch, I write 2 in red because 2 is prime, and then I'll write 6 at the end of this branch, writing it in gray because 6 is not prime. Now we've broken down 12 into 2 times 6. Again, we don't factor 2 any further because it's prime, but we do need to keep factoring 6, so we'll draw two more branches, and I know that 6 is equal to 2 times 3. So I'll write 2 and 3, both in red because they're both prime numbers. And now we're done. This is the factor tree of 24. You know that you're done when all you've got left at the bottom are prime numbers because you can't factor those any further. And the prime numbers that we have in our factor tree tell us the prime factorization of 24. Since there are three twos and one three, we know that 24 is equal to two times two times two times three, which is preferably written as two to the power of three times three to the power of one. And if a number is being raised to the power of one, we usually just don't write the exponent. So this is the unique prime factorization of 24, and we were able to use this factor tree to find it. And it's pretty cool because remember, it's unique. It is the only prime factorization of 24. So again, what we did here was factor 24, and then we kept factoring its factors until all we had left were prime numbers. And those prime numbers give us the prime factorization of 24. Since we need to be able to identify factors of numbers in order to make the factor trees, divisibility rules are really handy when you're making factor trees. We're not going to go over divisibility rules in detail in this lesson, but if you're struggling with factor trees, I definitely recommend brushing up on your divisibility rules. For example, one of the most simple rules is that if the last digit of an integer is even, then that integer is even, which means that 2 is a factor of that integer. So now let's move on to one more example. Let's go through the factor tree of 125. Let's start off with those two branches here at the top. You might notice that 125 is equal to 100 plus 25. Since 25 is a factor of both of these numbers, that means that 25 is a factor of 125. So we can start off this first branch with 25. Then we ask ourselves, what do we have to multiply by 25 in order to get 125? 
Well, 125 divided by 25 is 6, so we know that 25 times 6 is 125. So we'll put a 6 at the end of this other branch. And they're both in gray because both of them are composite numbers, not prime numbers. You also could have noticed that 5 is a factor of 125 because the last digit of 125 is 5. However, I chose to start off with these two factors so that we can look at an example where we have to continue factoring both branches. So now I know that 25 is equal to 5 squared, so we can write 5 at the end of both of these branches, and they're both in red because 5 is prime. And then 6 I know quickly is equal to 3 times 2, so we'll write 3 and 2 at the ends of these branches. Again, they're both red because they're both prime. So now we're done, just like that. That is the factor tree of 125. We know we're done because all we have left at the bottom are prime numbers. And again, we can use all of the prime numbers in our factor tree to find the prime factorization of 125. Since there are two fives, one three and one two, we know that 125 is equal to five times five times three times two, which is preferably written as two times three times five squared. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Using factor trees, we're able to find the unique prime factorization of numbers. It's pretty powerful. With that said, I'll give you one example to try yourself. Try going through the factor tree of 135. Feel free to tell me the factors you chose or the unique prime factorization you found down in the comments, and I can tell you how it looks. I'll leave a solution down in the description. Your factor tree might be a little bit different than mine, depending on the factors we choose, but the prime factorizations have to be the same as long as we do it right. So I hope this video helped you understand how to make factor trees. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math videos on the internet. And a big thanks to my friend Molly Ponkovich, who, upon my request, kindly gave me permission to use her music in my math lessons. Links to her pages in the description.